Hey there everyone, back today with another impressions video and this one is just going to be talking about the game I mentioned in my Tokyo Game Show video about the PlayStation Vita and that's Picoto Knights which is a free to play game on the Vita that came out just recently in Japan and of course it's free so if you have a PlayStation, a, a Japanese PSN account you can, uh, you can download it and play it for yourself. So, I'm just going to talk a little about it, give my kind of impressions after playing it for a week or so, and, you know, just let you guys know about it. So, Picoto Knights, it's kind of like Castle Crashers. It's kind of a 2D side-scrolling hack-and-slash, I guess, but, you know, it's, it's whimsical. It's not your standard kind of, like... It's not like a final fight or something where it's somewhat serious. I mean, as serious as those are. But it's, you know, it's got little kind of chibi characters that are in somewhat kind of, you know, colorful and animated situations. It's not quite as goofy as something like Castle Crashers. There's not like the, the you know, truckload of poo humor or whatever. It's, it's very simple. <laughs> But I think what Picoto Knights does well is it kind of relies a lot on customization. So, as you can see, like, the video here of the game is kind of uh, just your standard stage. You have lots of different enemies. They're all color-coded by strength. So, s the, depending on the color, we'll show you how strong they are. And, you know, it, get, it gets dark. They get brighter in colors the more dangerous they are so you'll find that red ones are the strongest whereas I think blue ones are the weakest and you know another cool thing is that it's four players all the time you you're always playing with four people regardless of if it's people or not and <laughs> let me explain that it's it's an online game you you have to be connected online to play I believe but you're not always playing with four people. It's a lot easier if you actually have four people playing with you, but generally you have you and some other people and maybe no other people, but you'll have th three other characters. And the characters are interesting because they're actual people's characters, but they're like in Dragon's Dogma, there's pawns where you can send them out to play with other people. Your normal character will normally, when you're not playing, go out and play things. So it'll be participating in other people's games as a ghost. And when you when there's not anybody connected to the stage you want to play or the game you want to play, you you'll get ghost characters controlled by the computer. And they're they're reasonable. I mean they don't they're not as good as playing with other people, but they'll help you out and they'll kill stuff and they're great to have around for kind of like drawing a boss away from you. So as you can see, the the game itself, you know, it's pretty it's pretty standard. You kind of run through, hack and slash everything up, come to the end, and there's usually like a boss situation. So there's either a huge boss or wave after wave of kind of smaller enemies, and it's different for each stage. So it's pretty interesting. Um, but like I said, the main part of Picoto Knights is not so much the stages. I mean, they're fun and short, and you can kind of pick them up play it, put it down, come back in a few hours, play again. And, you know, it's just short 10-minute bursts of, you know, one or two stages and then put it down and play something else or, you know, go about your day. It's pretty, pretty set up well for a handheld. But the customization is what makes Picoto Knights interesting in that you have a lot of different choices. So first you get to choose the character model you're using. And you start out with a few, but as you play the game, you'll pick up treasure chests, and in the treasure chests you'll find lots of different things, weapons and uh, shields and different types of kind of accessories. But you'll also find more character skins. So you'll see that you'll have a lot of different types of characters to choose from, but then you'll also find skins that change the color palettes. So you can go down into certain characters and look and see that they have different colors for this character now or you know you'll get entirely new models after a while but 
you know, it all depends. It's kind of based on luck on what you pick out of the treasure chest. And, you know, that's kind of how the game works. You have a lot of different weapons, too. So there's a lot of different weapons you can choose for your character, and they all the weapons play differently. They have... you have swords and claws and kind of throwing discs and magic. It's, it's pretty varied, and each of those weapons, as you find new ones, you can get different ones with different effects. So you'll have sometimes an electricity an electricity effect that will like kind of slow or stun bosses or regular characters, or you'll get an ice effect that will slow everybody. And it's pretty cool. So after that you'll get other things like uh, accessories that raise your abilities and kind of you have above your head always floating is like a kind of an avatar <laughs> like marker it's and I don't have that many but as you can see uh, uh, there are a few in here you can see Tor uh, Toro in there who's like the Sony mascot but there's also a Kuro if you play now I haven't unlocked him yet but eventually I'll get around to it but uh, beyond that there's also uh, leveling for the characters so it's kind of like an action RPG in the sense that you can level up your character and you have a skill tree so you have a skill tree for your character mainly and what's cool is that you have a skill tree for each weapon so you'll find that you can't actually level up a, on the skill tree every for the same weapon every time it encourages you to play with different types of weapons because you'll see that the requirements for the things on the skill trees go up by usually levels of a level of five so you actually can't level up five things in the level when you when you level up that much so you'll have to use those points on other weapons or I guess you could save them but it, it, in the end you'd have too many so it gives you the option to kind of mix and match how you play and you know test out new weapons which is cool and you also of course have health and like other strength parameters that affect your character in certain ways so yeah overall I'm having a lot of fun with this it's not something I would play for hours and hours and you know it's the kind of thing that it's free and the only times where you th where I find that like you would have to pay is if you're really really interested in playing levels and you're not very good and when I say that I mean like the only things I find that you can buy are crystals that resurrect you in the stage. So if you die in the stage, you're you're over. You don't lose actually. You don't lose anything if you die. You just don't get the experience for the stage and you know, you just wasted your 2 minutes or whatever that you spent on the stage. That's about it, but you can't resurrect without the crystals which are something you have to pay for. And there's also treasure chests that are large treasure chests. So the large treasure chests require keys and you can find those keys throughout stages and I think you're given a one key a day or something just for logging in and but beyond that you might feel like oh I want to buy some extra keys so I can open the treasure the big treasure chest that actually that have a better chance of dropping better loot obviously but it's totally unnecessary if you're gonna play a lot of the game you might want to but if you're not if you're just gonna play it casually like I am like you know, a couple times a day for five or ten minutes per a stage, then there's no need to buy anything. You can just play the game entirely for free, and it's fun. So, I guess if you have a Vita, and currently it's only a Japanese game, but it's pretty easy to get a hang of even without knowing Japanese because, you know, it's, it's kind of hack and slash. There's not really any dialogue or anything you have to memorize. So it's free if you have a Japanese PSN account. Look into getting Picoto Knights. It's pretty interesting. And it's fun. So it's fun kind of wasted time. And you know, if you if you have a Vita and you don't have anything to play, you know, look into it. It's good stuff. So I guess I'll see you guys next time.